Youngman Brown here. Today's episode is part two of my conversation with Yuko Shimizu. Um, if you missed yesterday's episode, be sure to go back and listen. Um, value-packed, awesome, inspiring stuff. That was episode 13. You can find it at yourcreativepush.com slash 13, or just if you're subscribed, just scroll back a little bit in your podcast player and hit play before you listen to this. So without further ado, here is the conclusion of my conversation with legendary Yuko Shimizu. Your creative push, episode 14. Trust your intuition. That's why you're an artist. Going back to what you were saying about um, being 30, I just turned 30 four months ago and it, it, I think you're right I think 30 is that like age where it's a good like self checkpoint where you're like all right where's my life at now and is this where I want to continue it going and I, I think it doesn't have to be like a number like 30 40 20 25 80 um, I don't think there's a specific number but I think there comes a point in everyone's life where they kind of have that self check do you think that if you hadn't done art school if you hadn't gone back to art school do you think that you'd still be in the same place that you are and do you think that everyone has like a a or b kind of a decision one path to go down or do you think kind of everybody ends up kind of going where they want to go i don't know you know like i i can't even imagine not make not making that decision around age 30 like i came to art school a little bit later because um art school needs a lot of money and living in new york needs like more money on top. So at age 30, <laughs> I really started thinking and I realized I don't have enough, I didn't have enough money to come to New York and go to art school for four years. So I ended up working a few more years, mm. but, um, 30 was definitely the time I felt like, Oh, I'm 30. I'm not a kid anymore. Like, you know, do I want to be here? Do I not want to be here? And my answer was no. And then from then on, because, you know, like I had savings, but I didn't have a, like a big enough savings. I have a few more years to really stop and think, you know, I didn't jump into something right away. And uh, to be honest, applying to art school in the U.S. when there was no internet at ap- the application system, like there was internet, but like, it was very basic. You know, I have to call the school and have them send me the catalog with the application papers attached. And then whenever you have questions, you have to call them. So from Japan, it's like a middle of the night, right? Like I wake up in the middle of the night right. to call schools in US. And like, it was not easy. But, um, and then of course, like, you know, I get discouraged, but with the, when you determine you do it, I think it's like a test, you know, like getting to the point I wanted to get to wasn't easy. And then there were all these traps to discourage me. And if I got discouraged, I might have stayed. And I mean, Japan and I married and I'm a housewife and I might have like two or three kids, you know, but then mm. like, I really couldn't picture myself that way and i really wanted to try out one thing i was interested in doing and never had a chance up to that point and so whenever those traps come and make things hard on me i was like no 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 don't get discouraged like i really want to do this that worked for me but you know some people don't love art but like in that sense it makes them happy like it's meditative or like you know like makes you weaken richer and then like what i did wouldn't work so what worked for me only worked for me if someone was in the same position and those traps in between made them decide to not pursue that maybe you're interested in art in different way you know or like in life in general, there, there are things we want to do and there are many things we want to do or we fantasize about life. Most of the things we say it, but we don't do. These like hard paths to go get there 
I think let us focus on things that we really have to do and not have to do. No, like, you know, for example, like, I fantasize about, like, say, living in Paris or Berlin. But I know I never pursue mm. it. But it's okay to fantasize it. And I have friends who moved to Paris and Berlin. And I can go visit them. I don't have to live there. I still dream about it. And, but, like, the, the path to get there, I'm not interested in pursuing it. And, but I was interested in pursuing going back to art school and, you know, doing this for, for time. So, you know, there are different choices, but I think it's important, like every once in a while, um, like age 30 or 50 or like whatever is benchmark for you and only for you. And it can be like new year. You know, a lot of people make resolutions like, in those benchmark times, it's important to look back and think, am I on the right path? Am I not? Is there anything I really want to do? And if the answer is yes, like, we should pursue it. Going along with that, like, I agree that there's, everybody kind of has dreams, like, and things that they think about all the time, and whether it's a life goal or um, a creative pursuit. And while, while you're talking there, I was just thinking about myself and I have so many different creative impulses and, and things that I see myself doing. What is the factor that makes somebody say, okay, I'm going to move to Berlin or, okay, I'm going to move to Paris or, okay, I'm going to become a professional artist. Like, how do you know which one of those things that you should go for or that you kind of have to go for? I don't know that like, because it's like everyone's different, but, um, one of my, um, professors at graduate school who I really look up to said like, your intuitions are good. That's why you're artists. So trust your intuitions. Something sounds good, but like something is really stopping you. There are reasons or something like that. You feel like you really want to do it. Like then trust your intuition. I don't know that, like, you know what? You won't. It's different. And also another professor said like, it's about art, but it like it apply for art. Like, when you're moving forward, say your art style of art is changing, you're experimenting, or like subconsciously, you're not even thinking that your work started changing and it freaks you out and you don't know what you're doing. And then you keep going. And then looking back, say like five years from now, 10 years from now, what didn't make any sense when you were moving through it? makes total logical sense looking back chronologically how it happened so i mm -hmm. think that applies to art but like i i think that applies to life in general yeah i agree completely it's it's funny how look looking back in hindsight can be just like an eye-opening thing and and really make you feel like you're on the right path sometimes so your podcast I don't know, but I think you will know maybe a year from now, two years from now. You know, you you may love it, you may have hated it or anything in between, but looking back years from now, I think you will know, oh, I guess that's why I did this. Yeah, I I love that. <laughs> Thanks for that advice. But I, and I, and I agree. I th and I think that, you know, love it or hate it either of those two options are better than never having done it. Yeah, exactly. I think the bottom line is like, would you regret it if you haven't done it? You know, like I won't regret not living in Paris. Well, at least right now, right? So like I'm not <laughs> right. doing it. But like if you feel, if I feel like maybe a year from now, you know, like I call you and say like, hey, I'm moving to Berlin and like, well, you say you didn't want to live there. And like, yeah, but then I didn't, but I really feel like I'm doing it right now. Then I'll do it. You know, like people will discourage you to, like your close friends, your family, like anything that's drastic, remotely drastic. There are people who will um, try and discourage you probably to help you. And... Mm -hmm. 
when those close people, because they're trying to help you, discourage you, encourage you, then at that point, you kind of know like, oh, you know, like my best friend is discouraging me from doing this, but I really feel like he's wrong. You know, I really need to do this. Like, that's when you kind of like, see it clearly like you actually had the answer in you and then you're just mm. waiting for that to come out and when people encourage you or discourage you you really feel like you, your mind becomes clear that what was that you were looking for i think that that happens a lot people want to put um whether it's they care about you and they don't want you to um take that risk that we were talking about, about, you know, moving, moving to America, moving to New York to, to pursue that. They think it's crazy because they would never do it because they're too scared. I, I don't know if it's, um, sometimes I think that comes out of just a genuine care for you that they don't want you to, you know, fail and then see you hurt. Um, and sometimes it comes out of jealousy, like that they have their things that they want to do and they're like, oh wow, she's doing it. Like, I can't believe she's actually doing that. And I don't know. It's, it's sometimes hard to tell, but I I think that, like you said, that's perfect advice is, you know, to trust your intuition. And especially when you have that kind of resistance coming from people that are closest to you, but you stand firm and you know, in your brain that this is something that you kind of have to do. I think that is your start the gun, get going. Cause that's, you know, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You had a lot of resistances, um, before you started your career, but on a day-to-day basis, what are some of the things that kind of hold you back from doing your work? If you know, if you don't feel like doing it or you're, you, like you said, you're, you know, if you're feeling demotivated or that you haven't gotten a call in two weeks, what are some things that you, uh, that hold you back? In my case, it's drawn and then colored on the computer. So drawing is for me, the fun part, but some come out as like really fun process of drawing everything moves smoothly and when everything goes smoothly feels like it's like a meditative process i'm just in the zone it's very calm and i just focus and of course it's a job and i have to draw almost every day so it's not always like that some i can't figure out how to get into it but the deadline's coming i have to finish it and of course i'm professional so like it has to be better than good to impress the client you know for the the fee i'm getting and you know like my job is to make client happy but sometimes i just can't get into it it's like very very frustrating because i draw for long hours like oftentimes days on one drawing, but it's just like my mind is not there. It's it's a struggle. But um, of course, like, you know, the difference between professional and non-professional is if you're professional, even in that situation, you have to provide the final work that is better than good. You know, like I, I, I learned to live with it. Um, it. It's great if everything is the beautiful meditative uh, situation, but it's not. <laughs> so mm. sometimes I'm like, oh, I have so much to draw and I'm not in the zone. So that's hard. You know, when you don't have enough work, that's stressful. When you have too much work, that's stressful. It's never <laughs> perfect. It's never perfect. The yeah. life is never perfect. So it's okay. Yeah, it's hard to find that Goldilocks zone. I I would imagine where it's the, just the right amount of work. What what um when you're not feeling motivated, what do you do to motivate yourself? It's hard, but like you know, whenever it it's not moving well, like it's good to like you know take my dog out for a walk. It's like you know sounds dumb, but like get a fresh uh-huh. air and then you know like come back fresh mm-hmm. or like okay like. Let's stop this for now because it's not working out and stressing me out. Do other things. Go home, get some sleep, and come back early fresh. As dumb as it sounds, it really helps to like come back fresh. And uh, one thing I emphasize is I always get enough sleep. I never do overnighters. And I do work long hours, but I always finish 
before certain time of the night, go to go back home and sleep more than certain hours a night. Because if I don't get enough sleep, the stress level just goes up. Yeah, uh, I think sleep is a very underrated thing. It's, it always seems to be the first thing to go when people are people are busy, and that's uh, I think why they end up being miserable zombies. Uh, I am a t- I'm a terrible person when I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, like um, I mean, like I it, it's not that I get moody, but like my stress level goes up when I don't sleep mm-hmm. enough. And everybody's different. I know plenty of people who sleep four hours and they're fresh and they're always in good mood. But like I ideally I need like seven or eight hours. And of course I don't get that. But like at least, you know, like six hours or so or a little bit more during the weekend, like we can catch up a little bit on sleep. It's very important. Yeah. I also agree that, you know, getting out of the house or like, you know, taking your dog for a walk. And you have the cutest dog, by the way. I love your dog. <laughs> He's very cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. Um, you know, not only fresh air, but uh, interacting with um, other people or animals. I love spending time with my dogs and just kind of like, oh, you, have a dog you know, going back to what's important. Yeah, I have two dogs. What do you have? Uh, I have a chihuahua um maltese and oh a, my god that must be so cute yeah she's that's my wife's dog and then a chihuahua i think chihuahua terrier named sadie who um she she was a rescue so we're not sure what she is but the, the vet thought she was chihuahua terrier she has he, big ears <laughs> yeah they're so cute my friend has a best friend has a chihuahua uh terrier too i think it is because it's a rescue too so they don't know but he had the terrier, like coarse terrier hair, you know? Yeah, they're the best. <laughs> I live for my dogs. They're the best. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's get into our final push. Can, before we do, though, can you tell us um, who is your greatest inspiration or, or what inspires you more than anything else? So there are a lot of artists who inspire me, um, but, you know, they change over the years because my tastes change and... So my preference change. If I were to pick something that um, inspire me the most, like it's I like traveling. I like traveling mm. to places I have never been, or uh, even better is I have never imagined to be going there. And also, like it's a really good way to get my stress off my shoulders. You know. Like, I'm always stressed. If I'm in New York, there's always stuff to do. Even when clients don't call me for two weeks, you know, there's stuff to do. Mm-hmm. But when I travel and I'm outside of New York, I'm not outside of the United States. Like, even better is outside of the United States. Like, I don't do work work. I might be traveling for conference or doing the public speaking or doing workshops, but... um I'm not doing the regular illustration work when I travel. And then I use that time to recharge because in order for you to keep creating, you have to take in something. You can't really just keep creating output, 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 output comes from input. And my input, of course, like, you know, books, movies, yeah, you know, art, but the biggest one is going to places that I haven't been. That really, you know, recharges me. Yeah, I agree. I, I love traveling. I wish I could do more of it or afford to do more of it. And uh, I, I do feel like it, yeah, I agree. It recharges you and it also kind of changes you, I think. I think every place you go, you um, pick up something different. Right. And so you're 30, so you might not even feel it now, but days are getting shorter and shorter. And Time just flies faster and faster as you get older. It might have started already, but everyone says it. At, like at my age, oh yeah, like years fly. What I think is because you're so used to, you know, like more accumulation of experience you have. There are less things that's new to you, so a lot of things become routine. Routine kind of like you move through routine. Quick. So when I'm in New York and I'm in the studio, like week passes so quickly 
months passes so quickly. Sometimes years pass so quickly. But when I'm somewhere I haven't been, and everything is stimulation because I haven't seen anything like what I'm experienced or seeing before. Um, they each day is so long, and I feel like at this mm. point in my life, the only way to experience that is get out and go somewhere I haven't been. And sometimes as as simple as Okay, I'm like teaching and I'm coming back to my studio and I'm walking. It's like 30 minutes walk. I make one turn that I usually don't make. And sometimes I find things that I didn't know existed on the route between my school and uh, studio. And that stimulate you and you know, elongate the time a bit. And like, I think like the, as you get older, more and more you need that stimulation to experience things like when you're a kid you know when the day's like really really long and like everything you see is nothing you haven't seen you have seen before so that's why i like traveling i think that's the biggest reason why i like traveling wow that's uh that's profound yeah i I found that you know the routine it just a day goes so fast and then a year goes so fast. I can't believe it's 2016 right now. I know. And uh, that's, that's great advice. I've never really thought about it. I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of time and how it seems different for different people and like different points in your life and different situations. Right. Right. So that, that's great advice. Yeah. Last year um, I, I went to Turkey for the first time and it, was to judge a competition and it was in the, the resort town in Turkey. I mean, I haven't really been to Turkey before that, but they picked for a friend of mine to come with me. And so like, you know, the first day we arrived and like, you know, we weren't doing anything yet because the work starts the following day and we're just walking around and like everything stimulation, especially like culturally, it's very different too. And then like, you know, by the end of that day, I said like, to my friend, like, look, even if I flew back tomorrow, only being in here for one day, I felt like I got a lot out of it. And like that, that's like, that's the experience I love. Yeah, for sure. Anything you can do to elongate your time is, uh, I think key. And, uh, Speaking of that, I have taken a lot of your time, I'm just realizing. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Uh, but before we uh, end the interview, uh, can I ask you to do what we call the final push. And this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of somebody that you've already inspired today and give them your best words of advice and push them into taking action. Wow, that, that was really hard. <laughs> Trust your intuition. That's why you're an artist. Trust your intuition. That's the, the, the great theme of this interview that I think it's it's a tough thing to figure out how to do. But once you figured it out, like you'll know yourself so much better and, you know, you'll be on a path where you'll be much, much happier. Yeah, I think so. Yuko, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. And you can find Yuko on her website, which is yukoart.com, or you can go to her store, yukoart.bigcartel.com. And on Twitter and Instagram, she is Yuko Art. Um, is there anything else? No, Yuko? that's about it. Oh, and I okay. teach a Skillshare class in ink drawing, and I don't know what the, <laughs> the link is. But if you Google it, you can find me if you're interested in taking a basic ink, ink, ink drawing class. Perfect. That's awesome resource. We will put that link on the show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash yuko. That's Y-U-K-O or uh, yourcreativepush.com slash 13. Yuko, thank you so much again for coming on the show today and giving us that push. Thank you. Oh, how lucky am I to be able to talk to such great people. You just decide to make a podcast and somehow people like Yuko just agree to come on your show and talk to you for an hour about creativity and about their journeys. Like it's insane to me. 
I feel so honored and so privileged that that this happened. One of the best things that I got from this interview was that idea talked about in this this second half about how something that you're going through might not make sense to you at the moment. The struggles that you might go through, the impulses that kind of bring you to do something creative or if you are doing art or music or whatever it may be, and something kind of weird pops up into your art, but you go with it anyway, five years down the line, you might look back at that and be like, completely understand why you did that or, you know, why you went through something or why something happened. Not necessarily that it's like fate, but it just makes sense for the journey that you happen to go through. And I think that it's just important to kind of embrace the things that happen to you and embrace the uh, ideas that pop into your head as you're doing your art and being able to bravely kind of incorporate them or bravely choosing the paths that, you know, unfold in front of you. And if there is like some impulse in your brain, some some path that you think that you're supposed to go down, go down it. Um, and if you want, you can talk to family and friends about it before you go down it. And that might help you kind of figure out how you feel about that by hearing how they feel about it. Because if they kind of try to take you away from that, to try to hold you back from doing that, and you just kind of hold fast and you're just pretty sure that that's what you're supposed to do, then you're supposed to do that. So just do it. Just trust your intuition, as Yuko said. Trust your intuition. So just a huge, huge thank you to Yuko for coming on the show and giving me that push and hopefully you that push as well, because that's what it's all about. I'd also like to give a thank you to HGCIII, who gave us a rating and review on iTunes. He said, well-produced, motivational, and informational. Youngman Brown gives great information, well-produced, and has great guests. Your creative push motivates and inspires. Well done. And Brandon TBM said, episode three hit home. And for your reference, that was my episode with R.A. Leff, a.k.a. Lauf. He says, I literally have a four-foot-tall quote on my wall that has the famous quote by Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up, which was the title of that episode, which Ari said. One of my favorite quotes, too, Brandon, and I thank you for that rating and review. You guys are entered into our contest um, where you can win some money just by leaving a rating and review. So if you are listening to this now and you were inspired by Yuko or you were inspired by a previous guest, I would really appreciate it if you left us a rating and review. It has been the number one factor into getting us on the number one spot in new and noteworthy for visual arts, which I still can't believe. And I'm so grateful to all of you for, you know, tuning in, listening and being interactive by uh, giving us a rating and review and commenting on the website at yourcreativepush.com. I just like to say how much fun I'm having. This has been a lot of work putting this podcast together, but days like today make it all worth it. I can't believe how much joy this has brought to my life and how much inspiration it's brought to me personally. So selfishly, you know, I'm already happy, but the fact that it is inspiring you as well to do your work, I I can't tell you how much that means to me. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing and for being a part of this little family that we're starting to create on your creative push. On tomorrow's show, we have Patty Lesser. Patty is a writer and a world traveler, and she comes on the show tomorrow to try to push us into doing our work. So that's it for today. Hopefully you were able to be inspired and pushed into doing work. As soon as this podcast is over, just hit that stop button, put your phone in airplane mode, turn off the internet, and just get to work. Just do a little bit of work today, and you will feel great. Thank you so much for listening. Get to work. We will see you tomorrow.